In the name of God, Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, I'm really pleased to share with you, Excellencies, some points about human rights and their importance. And this very high-level meeting of the Human Rights Council meeting on behalf of the Islamic Republic of Iran now, I would like to deliver my statement in Persian language. Please use the translation system. Mr. President, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the Islamic Republic of Iran remains steadfast in adhering to and respecting human rights and dignity based on its national cultural values and the Islamic teaching. Unfortunately, the realization of the lofty goals of human rights is faced with some trying challenges the most urgent of which is the systematic and widespread human slaughtering by the world's only apartheid regime, that is, the occupying, warmongering regime of Israel. Indeed, one must admit that the world is facing the most reprehensible moral and humanitarian crisis, which is the result of 80 years of unconditional support for and condoning the colonial occupation and the continuous violation of the Palestinian people's right to self-determination. During the past 140 days alone, more than 100,000 human beings have been slaughtered or injured or buried under rubble in Gaza. And those who happen to be alive there are facing an imminent death from starvation and infectious diseases. Dear friends, let's resolve in this important session today to not allow genocide and other atrocities become banal and normalized. I draw your attention to the recent report of the Special Rapporteur on the Occupied Palestinian Territories, which demonstrates the depth and gravity of the crimes and gross violations of human rights in Gaza and the West Bank. Today, the world is witnessing the maximum support for the Israeli atrocities by the United States of America and Canada and the UK and some of its other allies that make them complicit to the ongoing crime of genocide. The Human Rights Council must hold the Zionist regime and its supporters accountable for the atrocity crimes committed in the occupied Palestine. Mr. President, I must say loud and clear that the human rights record is now stained and even tainted due to the atrocity perpetrated against Palestinian women and girls in Gaza and the West Bank, and this is still going on. If we are to restore the integrity and credibility of human rights mechanisms, we need to end the Palestinian genocide by stopping the occupying regime from further aerial bombardment and ground and sea offensive against Gaza and Rafah, as well as systematic starvation of the Palestinian people. Ladies and gentlemen, we would not forget what cries were raised in this place more than a year ago following the tragic death of a dear Iranian girl that saddened everyone in Iran 
and a special so-called fact-finding committee was set up for that purpose. But today, no meaningful action is taken by the UN system in response to the mass killing of thousands of women and girls in Gaza. I should reiterate that imposing such procedures against my country under the pretext of fact-finding while there are effective national mechanisms in place is void of any logical, legal, or legitimate basis. It is only another instance of uh, instrumentalization of human rights mechanisms for political purposes. Mr. President, the sinister and dangerous phenomenon of terrorism and extremism continues to claim innocent victims. The Islamic Republic of Iran as a country that has been at the forefront of the fight against terrorist groups and sacrificed many lives for that cause has always stressed the need for effective international cooperation against terrorism as a global threat in an effective way as a prevalent international threat. Ladies and gentlemen, uni unilateral coercive measures continue to systematically violate fundamental human rights in the targeted countries and render serious harm to people. Imposing unilateral sanctions against nations is an unlawful and internationally wrongful act that amounts to a crime against humanity. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, I would like to stress that the Islamic Republic of Iran's policy of interaction and dialogue, including in the field of human rights, is unwavering. We would utilize all our national capacities to protect and promote human rights based on our constitution, especially in the field of human rights. And we would utilize all our national capacities to protect and promote human rights based on our constitution, as well as our international legal obligations and Islamic and religious teachings. And we will spare no efforts in this regard. Thank you for your attention.